But we do fight other fights and talk about other things. And you might recall that in the province of Alberta, a couple of years ago, before the pandemic was a thing, we were worried about the education minister in the former NDP provincial government. His name was David Egan, and he was just awful. He first came to my attention as some crazy, childish, juvenile, anti-oil sands protester. And when I learned he was appointed to cabinet, I was terrified for that reason. Here's just a reminder of just how awful David Egan is at anything. Take a look. No new approvals. No new approvals. No new approvals. No new approvals. Minister Egan, do you feel responsible for making an entire generation? Not doing any interviews. Do you work for him? So are you partly responsible for the 40% of grade 9 students who failed math? Minister Egan, can you tell me why you posed next to a bunch of children flagging the ISIS symbol? I'm Claire Wild. Maybe next step, next election, you could work on disability stuff. Yes, yes, well, absolutely. Please. You betcha, absolutely. Good luck with that. Can you tell me why one of your staffers just tried to lift my camera off my shoulder? Do you feel at all responsible for the 40% of grade 9 math students who failed under your watch? I told you he doesn't have a comment today. He was just here for the students. Did you enjoy the billboard on the side of Highway 2? Well, you can imagine that guy being in charge of education and how what students were learning in Alberta began to plummet. And so we erected a billboard along the side of the highway. That's a move we like to do, especially in Alberta. And it was a very simple message to fire Egan, fire David Egan. As you may know, only one person can fire a cabinet minister. That's Rachel Notley herself. Obviously, she wasn't going to do it, but we wanted to express our point of view. However, the NDP and their uh, elections commissioner at the time liked to stamp out any such dissent. And although we put that billboard up at a time when an election wasn't even months away, this was definitely not during the election, the elections commissioner, handpicked by Rachel Notley to hunt her enemies, came in for the kill and investigated us and condemned us and reprimanded us and threatened to fine us. Well, obviously we appealed, and that was in the Court of Appeal today. And joining us now is our friend Sheila Gunn-Reed, our chief reporter, who was following the hearing in the Court of Appeal. Sheila, great to see you again. I'm not sure if I summed up all the important details, but basically that billboard so irritated the Rachel Notley government that they had some bizarre witch hunt trying to ban us from saying that, claiming it was an illegal political campaign expression or something, right? Yeah, and it's even more complicated than that because it comes down to... uh, the ability for all Albertans to be treated fairly under the law. Because what happened to us, if you look at the timeline, it really was a witch hunt, but witches at least get the show trial. We didn't even get that. And that was the real problem here. Today, we were appealing a judicial review of the initial decision because we wanted a judicial review to point out that we had really had been treated unfairly. And I I should explain that before we get a little further because it is so complicated, but it comes right down to freedom of of speech and being able to be treated fairly. What happened was we put this billboard up at the end of November, 2018. By the middle of December, sort of towards the middle latter part of December, so we're headed into the Christmas season and don't kid yourself, government workers are not doing any hard work towards the end of December. But we get a letter in the mail saying, We've opened an investigation into your billboard and we want you to register your opinions as third party advertisers. Well, we're not third party advertisers, we're journalists. And we just do uh, the expression of our opinions in a more creative way than in the dying medium of print media. We Sometimes we do billboards, which is what we did. So we get our lawyers involved by I wrote it down January 9th. So right after Christmas holidays, we send them an email some or a letter some three weeks later saying, buckle up, we're going to fight. Five days later, on January 14th, we get a lawyer from Lauren Gibson, the now fired elections commissioner, who says in his email, it is regarding 
um, how do we they put it here? Um, a notice of adverse findings and a proposed fine. And so we get a letter just five days after we say, look, yep, we're lawyered up. We're ready to fight. We've got evidence we want to show you. Let's do this. Let's do this. They say, oh, by the way, we've already found you guilty. Here's your notice of adverse findings and the proposed fine, which for us is like the cops coming to your door and saying, oh, by the way, we found you guilty. The only thing we need to discuss now is whether you're going to get the electric chair or the firing squad. That's all they wanted from us. And so we said that's unfair. And that's where this all comes from. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day. Then I interview an interesting guest. And then I read my hate mail. You got to subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.